Record. Recording. Uh, music. Welcome to Gracefully Graying. I am your host, Attorney Henry Gornblatt. Every week on Gracefully Graying, we explore issues that we all face as we are aging or have aging parents from legal, economic, social, medical, and psychological perspectives. Every week, I welcome a new guest with a new idea. And today on Gracefully Graying, I am pleased to welcome as my guest, Gina Adams, who has created something very unique and important with her company, Buttons to Buttons. Gina, welcome to Gracefully Graying. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. First of all, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about who you are and your background? Well, I grew up in Michigan, went to Michigan State, and graduated with a degree in clothing and textiles. So I went on to work in the apparel industry for the North Face, as well as J. Crew in New York, and um, really enjoyed the product development side of things, but moved back to Michigan to raise our family. And then um, at that point, I for the past 10 years have ran an environmental nonprofit to help schools implement sustainable initiatives. And that's called Peace, Love and Planet. And then when I decided to go back and get my MBA at Wayne State, it really initially was to be able to show boards the economic advantages of their environmental initiatives. Um, but it was really quickly within my first marketing class that I realized it's difficult to sell something that people don't feel the pain or the need. So at that point, I kind of dove back into my roots of apparel design and uh, partnered with some professors and we started looking at specifically apparel needs of people with disabilities. And what you, why did you go into this area? I mean, was tell us your personal story that helped you understand that, you know, people with disabilities have needs and often there are things out there that don't meet the disabled, quite frankly. Absolutely. So it was really witnessing the devastating impacts of Parkinson's on my stepdad. He was this brilliant PhD engineer and guitar player and, you know, it was when he could no longer carry out activities of daily living that I kind of take for granted, like brushing your teeth or getting dressed. Um, it, was, it was really awful and there's a ripple effect. It's not just the um, physical impact when you can't carry out these activities, but the emotional toll. Sure, and depression I know is a side effect of Parkinson's and you know, because you're not the same and it's like right it can impact on so many aspects of your life yeah and at that point you know he had accumulated a closet full of dress shirts and he was unable to wear them so um, i like to think that by my uh, sustainability impact you know it's, it's merging my two passions um, because i was able to launch our company wearology um, and our first product really helps people overcome limitations in dexterity, but it also provides freedom of choice to wear clothes that make them feel great and self-expression. How did you come up with the idea? I mean, you were working on an MBA, so clearly you wanted to do something in business, so how did this come to the forefront? Well, I partnered with, um, it was an interdisciplinary partnership with some industrial design students, and we hosted focus groups at the Rehab Institute of Michigan with spinal cord injured clients there, and just asked, you know, are your clothing needs being met? You know, what are you missing in your life that could make it a little less frustrating? And they came up with a lot of amazing ideas and suggestions. And so the industrial design students went back, they designed a whole gamut of accessories, but I just, it went back to shirts and dexterity limitations. And I kind of, you know, this is probably, this product is maybe the 20th iteration, but we wanted to do something where people could wear their own clothes because that's how we express ourselves. Did you design these or how did, how did this happen? I mean, you've got some samples here and 
these are buttons to buttons. These are magnetic buttons, and you're going to explain that in more detail. Yeah. So, sure. How did it evolve? Um, it was really looking at how you can take existing clothes and retrofit them into a magnetic closure so that you can overcome dexterity limitations. Um, the time involved, this product, it benefits not only the person by restoring self-confidence and, and what started out as really restoring independence, I realized there's a whole level of um, not just the self-confidence but dignity to be able to dress yourself is really, I think, a critical um, component of our lives and so yeah the design it just started like how how can we do this and looking at what was available in the market and surprisingly you know there's a tool that helps people but it's not very functional there's a, a cuff link but it's not machine washable and there are beautiful adaptive clothes with magnets sewn into the lapel but they have limited assortment and they're expensive. They're anywhere between 20, or excuse me, 65 to like $120. So now we sell our sets. Um, it's an accessory and I'd love to demonstrate for you, but it is an accessory. Let's start with what types yeah. of disabilities were you aiming at? I mean, Parkinson's of course comes to the forefront. There's MS, there are I mean, what other things? I mean, people, Stroke. arthritis, strokes. You know, uh, the first person, um, my friend's father suffered from a stroke. And so I was talking to her at our daughter's volleyball tournament and just kind of asking how she was doing and how her dad was. And she said, you know, he was a CPA and he's really demoralized that he can't dress himself. And so I said, well, I have this idea. Do you think that he would let me retrofit one of his shirts? And so I went and I just bought, um, you can purchase mag button magnets at like a Joanne Fabrics. And I hand stitched them on a shirt for him, gave them to him. And that was our very first uh, test just to see, is this idea of interest? What happened? He loved it. He loved it. He wanted more. <laughs> so first of all, show us the buttons. Okay. So they, a typical shirt has seven buttons in the front and two on the cuff. So we've thrown in a tenth for good measure. So they're sold in sets of 10. And the idea is that now shirts that are in your closet, you can simply attach them. And I'll demonstrate here for you. So basically all you do is you clip this over and we did file our patent. Since you're an attorney, you can appreciate this. Uh, we did right. file right. our patent this just this past February. And so we're, you, have, you have a patent We're pending waiting, now. it's patent pending, exactly. We're waiting for that. And in addition to, you know, some of the illnesses that we've mentioned, um, we showed this to a hand surgeon and the hand occupational therapists and hand surgeons are ecstatic because their clients post surgery yeah, totally can. struggle with you know Buttons working and, with just one hand and so they've been really supportive of our um, program and our pro our product and what i can do is maybe just a quick i'll pop this on for you guys and see what you think For our viewers, we're getting an actual demonstration as the buttons are being <laughs> covered with the magnets. Yeah. In retrospect, maybe I should have uh, I should have uh, altered your shirt for you there, Henry. But so the idea now is that if you have any kind of dexterity limitations, you can just push your lapels together, and then you don't have to worry about. Whoops. It's very easy. And yeah. How strong do they hold? Well, these are prototypes. We are actually manufacturing this month, I'm excited to say. And okay. so they, uh, we are working on the pull force, is I what mean, they refer to that. Is it hard to pull them off? Uh, the, the actual magnets that we've purchased for no, I'm production. I'm talking about to open and close the shirt. Yeah, it's pretty easy at this yeah. point. But, I mean, it's, the idea is that it's going to be um, a little bit more forceful so that you don't you know, embarrass yourself. Right? This is great. And you also have, this is the actual shirt. I mean, it looks like a, it's a regular shirt. Yeah. You just cover the buttons. Yeah. And the magnets 
they look like buttons. I mean, yeah, it's great. We have a fun tagline. We say we were making it easy to get undressed. So it's both. It's like, you know, dressed and undressed. There's multiple benefits to it. And you have a little, let's show this. Yeah, so right now we are, um, launching what's called a crowdfund campaign and it's kind of an unusual concept to people but it's like if you purchase something on Amazon and then you wait for it to come in the mail we're taking pre-orders for our magnetic buttons okay. we sell them in sets single sets a three pack or you can buy ten to convert your entire wardrobe into an adaptive um, wardrobe and so right now if you go to our website which is buttons to button and the idea is buttons as the noun to button the verb. Um, it's a Jack White, uh, Jack White lyric for all of you White Stripe fans. Um, and yeah, we would appreciate your viewers' support. And this is what it actually looks like. Yeah, it's a great close-up so that so they you've can got understand. The Magnet underneath, covered by plastic on both sides. Yeah, this is an injection molded cap. Okay. I have a 14 year old son that likes video games, as you know, the 14 year old, and that was my inspiration for this design. So it clips on really nice and securely over the button, and then this part here snaps um, onto the button hole. So you can convert any shirt into a magnetic closure. And as it says, easy to install, install in minutes, machine washable. So once they're on, you can throw them in the washing machine? Yeah, so that's the idea. If you have a parent, you know, that might be in an assisted living facility or an independent living facility, um, you know, it's a great gift for them because, again, it saves valuable time. I was at a Parkinson's support group um, just last Tuesday demonstrating to get feedback. And, you know, time is really one of the biggest uh, challenges that they reported. They just, you know talking about you know for you know getting dressed or even just trying to answer the phone you know everything takes quite a bit of time and so we're hoping that our product not only restores valuable time to the end user but then the caregivers that spend anywhere between 14 to 34 hours a week helping loved ones I think it's amazing thank you I, I've got to commend you I mean because it's a simple solution to uh, a serious problem. Yeah, 30 million people have a dexterity limitation, you know, issue. And the thing about it, it's kind of an invisible disability because, you know, arthritis, you know, you don't look at somebody and be like, oh, you're disabled. It's just, it's a hidden disability. So one out of six people cannot dress independently. And I was shocked when we started looking at the market and whether or not, you know, there was a true need. And I really feel like, um, you know, knowing 10,000 people reach retirement I mean, age huge. every day. And, you know, professionals, we take pride in our appearance and right. particularly our independence. And so I'm hoping that, you know, this idea and the importance of aging in place and just still, you know, being able to be yourself and express yourself in your clothes is, um, I don't know, I hope that we can bring a lot of uh, uh, fun and I would just say, yeah, alleviate some frustration in people's lives. Tell us a little bit more about the launch. I mean, the launch is going on as we're talking, literally. Right now, yeah, this is uh, prime time. So we uh, launched with this crowdfund campaign. We've been building our social media platform so that more people this? know I mean, about us. I'm intrigued about this. I mean, it's GoFundMe, basically, isn't it? Or well, okay, so crowdfund, there's different types okay. of this tell, crowdfund campaign. Tell us how campaign. a crowdfund works and how did you Some get Some are this? Raising, funny, you know, raising money for a loved one or, you know, for it, just for direct donations. Ours is a little different because we're actually selling product. We are providing product for people, but we are asking for the money up front so that we can purchase and make the inventory. That's kind of the difference. Now, of course, it's called Back It, so people can place a direct contribution, which we would appreciate, uh, to help purchase our first set of inventory. That's interesting. This may be a little far-fetched, but Tesla did this. Did they? Think of it. The Model 3 Tesla, which is a new one. Yeah. They asked people to reserve to get a space to get them before they were launched and it was a thousand dollars a person okay 
and I think they had maybe 500,000 people Dang, who signed up. that's nice. So I'm I don't just know. thinking Maybe we what you're doing. Up some people. It is. It is. And we, you know, we try to. It's, ex, you know, it's an exclusive deal. We're offering people a 20 percent discount for their patients, essentially, because our, we're promising delivery in November. I mean, basically, we're accepting the money up front. We're manufacturing here, and then we'll deliver the product by November. But these are the final product, or these are still the part of the working process. These, this is my lovely packaging. Right. <laughs> and then we have prototypes that we've been printing and testing. And now um, we, you know, you talk about the launch. We just received a $10,000 bath grant from the state of Michigan so that we could purchase the steel mold. This is expensive. Physical products are really, um, it, you know, it's $7,000 for just a small steel mold. And then we're injection, injection molding the magnet and producing this other plastic part. And then um, a local Michigan manufacturer is producing this other little metal part. Kim, so have you talked to hospitals or doctors who specialize in some of the areas like Parkinson's and MS and other disabilities? I've reached out to them for sure. And, um, you know, we are kind of canvassing the area. You know, Detroit's a, it's a hub for entrepreneurship right now. So we've been competing in pitch competitions. Um, I d recently won a pitch competition for Michigan Women Forward, which was really exciting because, you know, out of 125 people, we were selected to compete, wow. and then we were actually selected um, to win, that, and that was a $7,500 um, grant to us. So. Each of these little chunks has helped us with the product development costs, which have been really high because, again, physical product, I've hired CAD designers, I've had to hire um, the 3D print, you know, we printing right in Pontiac area. So, you know, it's, um, you know, we're paying people for our, for their services, um, but it's, it's expensive production cost. Gina, how much are you trying to raise? Uh, well, we are raising $6,500 for this first um, Indiegogo platform. Um, so if you go to our website and select pre-order, it'll take you to this platform. And the idea is, you know, kind of rallying the troops and it's just a fun way to uh, get people to see not only who's backing our campaign, but also it's an opportunity for us to provide a discount and kind of showcase our product. Have you gotten any endorsements from the medical community or rehab places? Yeah, so occupational therapists we know are the most compassionate individuals and they scour magazines and websites to look for helpful products for their clients. And you know, so through the Rehab Institute of Michigan and the Special Tree um, Rehab facility that's down in Canton. We've definitely we've presented. They're excited to get their first samples that we'll be presenting to them, so that they can promote and showcase our product with their customers. And when are you projecting first deliveries if everything goes smoothly? So our sample sets will be ready in the next couple weeks. We're working with a local manufacturer supplier called Protojet right in Fraser, and so we'll have those first hundred sets here in the next few weeks. And then once we can make all the initial tweaks and make sure the product is performing and functioning, as again, withstanding laundry is a huge claim and we wanna make sure that we are not disappointing anybody. So, um, so that's why we're giving ourselves a little bit of a window with a November delivery once they order. What are some of your goals? Clearly this is the first product, but I'm sure you have other ideas too. Oh yeah, so once we have the shirts, obviously people like to wear jeans, people like to wear their pants. Um, a lot of people are, you know, have to wear elastic waist sweatpants. And again, it doesn't express who we are in our own style. So um, we're working on a pant um, accessory right now, as well as a bra closure. So a lot of women, um, you know, whether it's from MS or things, you know, these mo movements are not possible. Right. So we're looking at ways that we can make that a lot easier with a front closure. And then once we expand um, different colorways, we can have a lot of fun with the product, right? So, you know, people can embellish their shirts if they want. And then we're going to move into um, different products 
that are dexterity specific. So my team member, James Murtha, has a high spinal cord injury. I met him and recruited him during our customer discovery work because um, we interviewed over 300 people when we were initially looking and researching our target market. And James lives independently in Ann Arbor, so we host our team meetings at his apartment and he has been an inspiration for a pipeline of products you know the other day this winter when it was so cold out when I left our team meeting I said do you need anything before you go and he's like well put those two hats on my lap I'm gonna go out and I was like James you're wearing a hat why do you need two more and he's like well that's what I wear for mittens and so hats for mittens yes and as you know, you and I have mentioned earlier, I'm a skier and way back when I was working for the North Face, I used to volunteer and teach people with disabilities how to ski out in Breckenridge, Colorado. And at that time, clothing, it, it became very obvious that clothing designed for able-bodied people like you and I does not work for people with disabilities. It just, it doesn't work. And so we were using duct tape, which I was appalled because, you know, I worked for the North Face. I'm like, there has to be a better solution. Right. So here we are, you know, fast forward 30 years later, nobody's come up with a decent mitten that people with limitations can put on and that stays on. What about Velcro? Velcro's great, it works. It does break down eventually um, in the wash, but no, Velcro is a good. It's it's harder. I mean, a lot of people have well, suggested that for our buttons, but it's harder to undress. I'm thinking, wouldn't the same principle work where you have a glove or a mitten, you put it on, and there's a flap with a magnet just exactly. attached to the hand? I'm going to invite you to our development pro our development <laughs> meetings for sure. No, I'm just thinking. Yeah. Exactly. Doesn't that make sense? It does make sense. And, you know, I met um, a gentleman actually at one of our pitch competitions who he designs heated clothing garments specifically for motorcyclists. But um, I'm partnering with him to look at a heated mitten because a lot of people, um, for instance, with uh, scleroderma, which is a devastating skin disease, they don't even go out in the winter because of the flare-ups and the, you know, just sensitivity to cold weather. So we're looking at even a heated element to these mittens so that people are comfortable. Now, is this a whole family venture or is it all you? Well, no, I have two great teammates, um, you know, James Murtha and Rochelle Osborne. I'm recruiting them on my team. And then, you know, we have an excellent, um, set of advisors who help us from commercialization to the product development to physical product. In fact, it's uh, Wayne State as well as Lawrence Tech University. Their Centropolis Accelerator has been instrumental in the development of our product. I keep thinking that you should be teaming up with some hospital. I'm you know, it's like yeah, if mind you know anybody, it seems like you're interviewing the right people. So, yeah, I mean, we do see ourselves once we're able to get the volume. So once pay people place their orders, we can reduce our margins so that we could sell through distributors such as, um, you know, common, not like you see in hospitals, the medical distributors within the hospital confines. So if you have to pick up like your ice machine or a wrist guard or your knee brace, you know, we want to be right there because again, these are helpful. This is a helpful, it's $30 a set, it's super helpful for people. What about healthcare distributors? Absolutely. And that's, you know, because we are kind of between helpful medical device but we're also really about fashion because we want people to look good right now the products that are out there are really institutional looking they, they're medical looking and just like you put a watch on we want people to feel good so you know the pipeline of products are really about stylish kind of sexy accessories right but um, the hospital yeah whether it's a distributor and I was gonna say so Zappos you have popular companies like Zappos Target they've recently launched adaptive apparel companies so we see that as a really great opportunity for us to distribute through as well what advice would you give to someone and I'm thinking more not only your product line but you've got tremendous enthusiasm. So what triggered this, that you decided you wanted to go in this direction? You know what's interesting? I'm glad you asked that because, so my stepfather, when I was at Michigan State, I was in their engineering program. 
but I just wasn't feeling it. And, and Tom, he was like, Gina, you should design prosthetics. And at the time I was like, really? I don't know. You know, so I ended up graduating with a degree in apparel, as I mentioned. But I feel like I've made this huge circle in my life and I finally like come back to my purpose where now not only can I create and design amazing product, but it ha we have a social mission to help people. And so like, I feel like I found my life's purpose and that's where my energy and enthusiasm comes because you know, whether we can help um, 5,000 people or 30 million people that are struggling with dexterity limitations, it's the right thing to do. And the target is huge. I mean, when I launched Gracefully Graying, I, it's the largest demographics in the country. Right. It's also the demographics with the greatest wealth in the country. And it's a demographic where every year more and more people are becoming of age. I mean, you're much younger, but there's a certain age or with aging parents. And then you have the fact that there's such a need. And yeah. with disabilities, I think often, yet yeah, there are indices around that, but often our country seems to shove people to the side. You're disabled get out of the way kind of. I mean, yes, we have disabilities acts and things like that, but it's still too often they're treated like second-class citizens. I agree. It's a really underserved demographic. And, um, you know, again, I think that there's just such a huge opportunity. Everybody wants to feel good. Like at the end of the day, um, people want to feel like they matter and that they're doing something, right? And that they're contributing positively to society. And, you know, this whole idea of aging in place is it's huge it's so yeah. important because people i mean my home is my home like that's you know i don't want to have to leave and and being able to dress yourself is just one of those activities that everybody has a, what's independence yeah. you want to be yeah. independent and if you have a disease that you're fighting such as parkinson's it takes away your independence so yeah. you look away you look for ways to continue to be independent yeah so. yeah but I think what you're doing is wonderful. And again, how do they reach you? How does someone support? Let's do that. And we've got about a minute and a half, and I'd like some final thoughts before we sign off on Gracefully Green. Okay. Gina. Well, again, um, our campaign is Buttons for a Better Life, because we really want people to embrace this idea that you can change and retrofit your own shirts. A lot of people with Parkinson's, if you have a closet full of clothes, now you can purchase a set of magnetic button adapters and retrofit. You may need some help with the caregiver to attach them, but once they're on, they're machine washable, and you can simply go to Buttons to Button. So our name is a little interesting, um, but it's the noun buttons to button the verb. So it's buttons to button.com and place a pre-order, help support our cause. We really appreciate it, because um, it's gonna help us launch this company to help and make a really positive social impact. And I will say that we are donating $1 for every pledge to the charity of the customer's choice. We've partnered with the Arthritis, Parkinson's, and Scleroderma Foundation so that we can give back and fund some research to cure these devastating diseases. Gina Adams. I want to thank you so much for being my guest on Gracefully Graying. I want to wish you the best of luck with your venture, Buttons to Buttons. And I want to thank you for watching Gracefully Graying. Thank you. Yesterday, the child Claire?